Hi, it's Joel from Coaches Rising here. And this dialogue is part of our pre-summit series for the Coaches Rising Summit. You can find out more about that. And we've got a totally amazing lineup of transformational coaches taking part this year by heading to www.coachesrisingsummit.com. In this dialogue, I'm speaking with Jim Dethmer, and he's a master coach. He's been in the game for a long time, over 25 years. He's the founder of the Conscious Leadership Group and author of the very highly rated book, The 15 Commitments of Conscious Leadership. In this interview, Jim shares how he helps his clients make a really powerful shift from what he calls below the line, a place of reactivity and contraction, to what he calls above the line, which is a place of presence and creativity. He also unpacks the one piece of wisdom that he would give to coaches, which is to coach from total presence. Enjoy. So um, really great to be with you today, Jim. How's things? Oh, they're fabulous. Absolutely fabulous and great to be with you. I'm sitting in our cottage in northern Michigan and it's one of my favorite places on the planet. So um, I'm in a state of bliss. <laughs> well, I'm, I must say I'm a bit jealous. It's like it's a gray day here in Amsterdam and it looks blue outside and the trees and yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, yeah. I could do with that. So, <laughs> so um, we've got about 30 minutes to dive in and um, you're going to be uh, one of the faculty in our upcoming Coaches Rising Summit. So I'm, I'm really excited about that and to to explore you and, and your work today. And I've been asking a couple of questions to each of the faculty before uh, in these kind of you know pre-summit uh, dialogues. So I want to I want to do the same with you today, if that's okay. So um, the first thing I've been asking people is is what's the the shift that you made that that kind of opened the way for you to become a more impactful coach, or or maybe it was a big transition in your work that allowed you to to kind of take that big step, you know. Mm. Uh, th- several, if I could give you a couple instead of one, that sure. would yeah. be a more accurate reflection of my reality. Um, one is that I, you know, I've been doing official one-on-one coaching for about 25 years in the corporate organizational world. And multiple times over those 25 years, I have clarified and re-clarified what it is that I want to be coaching people about. Mm. And therefore, constantly clarifying who my target audience is. For a long time, I don't do it so much anymore, but I would write down about every three months the exact description of the kind of client I wanted to come my way. And that has over and over again um, shifted my coaching practice. And it's always been, almost always been scary. Because as I would clarify, and I would say, I no longer want to work with, you know, top executives around strategic planning or uh, developing core visions and core values for their organization. And I would keep clarifying just what I wanted to do. It would mean that I would let go of clients and let go of clients and let go of clients and then hold a space for who's the next group of clients coming my way. So that's been huge huge. And I'm always doing that. I'm always refining what is my most exquisite coaching experience. So that'd be a shift that I've made over and over again. Mm. Uh, Another huge shift that I made was when I really decided that every coaching experience was going to be as much for me as it was for them. Mm. And so I decided that I was going to show up as a full experiential learner in the coaching process. So this is very different than the typical therapeutic model, you know, which I know our coaches, we aren't therapists, but in the therapeutic model, you know, the therapist's um, experience is removed from the work with the client and worked out with the therapist supervisor. And of course, we don't do that in the coaching model, but I'm really diligent to have my current experience be in the coaching experience. So if I'm boring myself in the presence of a client, I'll say, hey, I notice that I'm getting bored with what's going on here and I want to reveal that to you. Mm. Or if I'm feeling sad or scared, I reveal that. 
because I want my experience to be of total service to the client. So the effect that's had is every coaching experience is a learning opportunity for me. And I mean really a learning opportunity of being present in the now moment. So that'd be a second one, a huge shift for me over the years. And then third would be our model at the Conscious Leadership Group is really built on making a distinction between context and content. Mm. So we tell our clients, we are not subject matter experts in your content. We're not here to give you advice. We're actually here to draw your attention to the context from which you're being with your issues and hold an intentionality around that. Now, that's a big subject. It's really the cornerstone of what we do, our whole model. But that has dramatically shifted the way I coach. So mm -hmm. I'd say those would be three things over the course of many, many years that have made a difference. Wow, I love hearing that. I mean, I just get a lot of energy from each of those. I want to ask you more about context and, and um, content in a minute. But yes, I, I, I was struck by the second one you mentioned. I mean, I, the first one too, as a practice to keep, refi you know, to keep tuning into who is it I'm most inspired to coach as a, as a kind of emergent evolutionary practice of, you know, of, of like, what is it I'm becoming? Who am I, who am I there to work with? It just sounds so powerful. But Yes. Um, I, I noticed that's this this second point as well is something I've become really uh, open to and interested in my own coaching. So I, I found the coaching is so much more powerful and real when I'm not just kind of this, uh, you know, um, mirror, you know, and, and they don't know anything that's going on inside of me uh, when I'm when I'm vulnerable and I'm there in the space and I'm, I'm prepared to take a risk to share who I am and, and enter into that kind of space of presence but of, of real human connection i've just found that so rewarding and, and powerful <laughs> so lights me up hearing you say that yeah and i mean doesn't it make your experience of coaching much richer because you're there being a human having an experience mm -hmm. and i i think it's huge you know one of the things i learned and one of the things we teach the coaches that we work with that we certify is would you be willing to believe that everything that is coming up in your experience as a coach is totally of service to your client. So your feelings about this now moment with your client are of service to the client. Your thoughts about the client, about the situation, about yourself are totally of service to the client. Your wants, needs, and desires in this now moment with the client are totally of service. So we can actually make a distinction between, both of which are great, by the way, between being authentic and transparent with the client around my experience, let's say, of the issue they're exploring. Mm. So let's say the client is exploring something around, you know, being unwilling to delegate to uh, teammates. And I might say, wow, uh, that's something I've experienced in my life, too, so I can be transparent with them about that. And I might even be experiencing it now in my life so I could be transparent, which would be fabulous. Mm. There's another level of presence, though, which is, like I said, saying to a client, uh, I notice that I'm distracted when you're talking. And I notice that I'm not fully present in here listening to you. And I want to out that with you. And I'm, I'm having the thought that you're just kind of recycling the same tired drama story. Mm -hmm. So now I'm bringing my actual here and now experience of this relational encounter. Or I was just debriefing with, with one of our coaches this morning before we talked, and she had just been in a coaching experience. And one of the things she said to the client was, I realize I'm not sh showing up in my full power in this moment. I'm actually making myself a little small in your presence, which coaches can do. You can not own your full power. You can make yourself small. And she outed that to the client. Well, my hunch is that one of the patterns this particular client is experiencing in life is people regularly go one down and makes themselves small. Exactly. But now the coach is telling you they're doing that. So it becomes real juice for this coaching experience. So it requires, like you were saying, it requires that you and I be fully present. And then it requires that we have the courage to risk being transparent. Mm -hmm. So and, and then the result is a, after every coaching experience, I go, that's fabulous. I learned every bit as much as the coach did. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> awesome. 
And, and you know, talking about leadership, that, you know, how, how we are being impacted by being in connection in the moment with that client that we're with, it's, it's just such rich leadership, um, it's such a rich leadership arena, isn't it? You know, it's, it's telling yeah. us so much. So yes. that kind of direct in the moment feedback, I, I, I love that. So. Yeah. Cool. Well, well, let's. Well, let's. Uh, you said you said you talk about context and content, and that really piqued my interest. I, I wonder if you could say a little bit more about why that's important. Yeah, sure. So, uh, definitionally, content is what it is that we're talking about. So, when I sit down with a client after I get present with them, and we usually do a presencing exercise, and then I say, "So, what do you want to explore today?" And they're going to bring, because one of my deals is they're 100% responsible for the session, so they bring the issue, the content. They're going to bring up an issue. And let's say they're going to bring up an issue around um, you know, a particular conflict that they're having with one of their fellow managers. Or they're going to bring up, in my life, I don't make any distinction with my clients between their personal and their professional life. So maybe they bring up that their kid got busted for you know, drug use at school or whatever. They're going to bring something forward. Whatever it is that they bring forward is content. We're all used to that, right? Now, in our model, what we introduce our clients to, and they have to do reading before we work with them, and they have to watch some of our material is, that's the content. Then we're going to ask them, around that issue, where are you? Are you above the line or below the line? That's the phrase we like. It's so simple. Mm. Below the line means that I'm in contraction or I'm in reactivity to this. It actually means that in some way, toxic fear, I'm in the grip of toxic fear. It could be mild, moderate, or significant. Mm. Or above the line means I'm being with this issue from presence. I'm open. I'm curious. I'm taking responsibility. I'm, I'm here from a place of deep learning around this issue. So, Where I'm being with it from is context. Mm. Content is what the issue is. And one of our beliefs and experiences is that unless we address context, content will keep recycling. Mm. Now, this is huge. In other words, and I learned this because for years I did uh, couples coaching. Mm. And a couple would come in, for example, and they would want to present on some piece of content, Mm. you know, whatever the typical stuff is that comes up in all of our coupleness, you know, whether it's money or sex or kids or, you know, in-laws or whatever. And they would come to me in that mindset, kind of wanting me to adjudicate the content, you know, (laughs) tell Mm. them, here's the, you know, which it doesn't take long before you realize that's a failed project. Mm -hmm. So then what I started to see was that unless couples addressed how context they were being with the content, even if we got temporary relief around that content, the relational pattern would keep recycling. Mm -hmm. So this is a huge distinction in my mind. It's keeping people focused on how they're being with the issue. And that's where we came up with the 15 commitments of conscious leadership because they're literally 15 different uh, paradigms from which you can be being with the issue. You can be there from curiosity or Mm. defensiveness. You can be there from taking responsibility or living in blame. You can be there from feeling your feelings or not feeling your feelings. You can be there from candor or withholding. So what we explore with clients is how they're being with the issue. And once we get them taking responsibility for that and shifting their context, the resolution for the content often becomes quite obvious to them quite quickly Mm -hmm. and doesn't require us to give them certainly any advice or anything. So that's a big idea. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, and it seems like suddenly the you're giving them a, a paradigm shift or the, the a revolutionary new way to use the content to be in the content rather than tinkering on the content level it's i'm i'm curious how do you help people open to that kind of shift yeah great yeah. well first they need a little information mm. because again most people think that their life is about their content mm. And so first they need a couple of minutes on, hey, there's this thing called context. And like I said, we're just going to give a simple thing above and below the line. Mm -hmm. And then what we teach leaders is one of the first keys to being a transformational leader is the ability to develop enough self-awareness to locate yourself 
as either above or below the line in any given moment. So part of our practice in all of our coaching, whether we're working with individuals or teams, is just pausing regularly and saying, where are you? In this actual now moment, where are you? Are you above the line or below the line? So like today, uh, it'd be good for, we can bring present stuff here. Yeah. So like, I had down that we were going to talk at a certain time. You had down that we were going to talk at another time. So I got down ready to be available to talk, and you weren't there. And so I pinged you and didn't hear back from you. And I immediately felt some constriction, which means I went below the line. Yeah. So what that could look like is, first of all, I can get righteous. Like, what the hell is going on here? We had an agreement. He's not keeping the agreement, you know, something like that. That's one of my favorite personas that I can go to. And then I can get scared like, well, did I screw this up if I got the wrong time? Or I can start to get scared around scarcity, like I have a fairly full day and I wanted to do this with you, and so am I going to run into a scarcity of time? All of which is me going below the line. Yeah, yeah. So now the key is, can I locate myself and say, well, I notice I'm triggered and I'm below the line? Because the content of when is our scheduled call is not the issue. Yeah. The issue for me was the context of how I was being with it. So once I noticed I was below the line and a little bit of triggered reactivity, I did a practice, which was I just took four conscious breaths. I came back to presence. I kind of got centered and kind of in a space of abundance thought, we'll connect whenever we connect and it'll all be perfect. And I came out of my reactivity and came back into presence. Of course, then you respond back. It's so fascinating because then you respond back and say, hey, I had it down for an hour later. Still want to talk. Great. So the content gets resolved, yeah. but I don't have to be in reactivity. So we teach our clients all the time and I do it as a practice. I literally have an app on my iPhone that randomly asks me throughout the day. It's called Mind Jogger. Where are you? And it's just asking me, are you above or below the line? It does it when I'm playing with my grandchildren or playing golf or meeting with a client or writing a blog. It just comes up and I want to check, am I below the line or above the line? Mm -hmm. That to me is a huge question in self-awareness. You could ask it a jillion ways. Are you present or are you not present? Are you really here now or not here now? It doesn't matter. We just develop language that tends to work well with business leaders. Yeah. I, well, I love the practicality of that because you know it's a practice that that anyone can take on and 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 keep bringing themselves to it over and over. And you can, you know, I can get a sense of what you're talking about immediately. You know, am I in reaction? Am I contracting? Or am I am I in creativity or or response? And and then I imagine, yeah, you know, once you're in that shift to response openness, then. Maybe the skillful action emerges. What's next? Yes, exactly. Now, our, what we really want to add to it is it's one thing to develop the practice of that as an individual. So it literally, it's like a spiritual practice for me. It's like my meditation practice. It's like my movement practice, locating myself as a practice. But what we're really up to is what does that look like in relationship? So yeah. I imagine that when you, you were on another call doing another interview, you start seeing me saying, hey, where are you? I thought we had this scheduled. We must have crossed wires. I'm going to move on with my day. I imagine you were over there having an experience. Yeah. And you might have, I don't know, you might have gone below the line as well, felt a little anxiety, gotten nervous or scared. Well, then the power of human relationships is instead of dealing with the content, which would be, hey, I had it down for nine. I had it down for 10. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. We can actually say to the other person, I notice I got scared when I saw your note or I notice I was shaming myself or mm -hmm. I noticed I felt angry and you could reveal your experience back to me. So a ton of our coaching is with dyads, triads in an organization and whole teams where we practice this on the fly yeah. in an organization to stay present with the teammates because then we're in higher states of collaboration and creativity and all that stuff. So it becomes a blast to me. Yeah, nice, nice. And just to say, I think my video is jumping back and forth. And maybe it just even did it right as I said that. Yes, but, um, yes. great manifestation. It did it just as you said. So it. I don't know what that's all about. But I hope it's not distracting too much. Um, no problem. And yeah, I mean, I did, I did feel that. You know, I was interviewing uh, Jamie Smart, one of the other faculty members, and we were in this beautiful conversation. And then suddenly, I saw you call, and I was like, <gasps> and I was like, oh no, what have I done? And then I saw your messages come through and 
yeah, you know, I felt that part of me that did go below below this line and, and start to react. And, and it took me out of presence. And I was able to quite quickly let go and just say, okay, you know, just be with what's here. This is what the situation is. Um, but I don't, I just noticed how much I soften to you as you, as you start to invite those possibilities in, Hey, you know, maybe I I felt this fear and and I felt some shame. And again, it feels so much more human and it clears up the, the, the kind of dirt that's maybe got in the way of our connection. And then suddenly it's like, I I literally feel my nervous system relax and it's like, there's much more possible in our connection now. Isn't that fabulous? Yeah. So, And then, you know, what we get curious about is, is there a pattern here? Mm-hmm. Like, let's say that we were going to have a call every week for the next month. And two or three times, we ended up at a content level missing at scheduling. Mm-hmm. Well, then I'd get curious over here about how am I creating that? How am I showing up? such that my agreements aren't being easily and impeccably kept with you. Mm. Now, again, in a team, in an organization, when people end blame and criticism, including blaming themselves, kicking the shit out of themselves, and they get curious around how they're creating this experience, all of a sudden our learning edge goes up dramatically, you know, let alone if we do that as a whole team. You know, we missed a, a software delivery date, let's say, as a team. Well, it's easy to blame, you know, the data scientists did this, the engineers did that, the the customer screwed up on the specs or whatever. But if you get curious about it and say, well, I I got triggered, I went below the line, now let me get curious and see what I can learn from this. And if we're on the team and you're learning and I'm learning and she's learning and they're learning, all of a sudden we're having a blast. Mm -hmm. So that's our whole modality for coaching. Yeah, nice. Uh, Exciting stuff. um, And I just see how practical it is. And there's another question I want to ask, and I want to dive in now because what usually happens with these uh, these sessions, these dialogues, is we get so into the the talking, and then I'm like, okay, we've got a minute left, and I, I so and and I, you know, I imagine we're in we're already talking about the answer to this question, but I want to ask it anyway. And it's it's what's the one thing you would say to a coach, uh, like a piece of wisdom or something that that you think would be the thing that would really help them become a more effective or more powerful or transformational coach? Well, yeah, I have been covering several of them. So let me add to in addition to what, like Mm -hmm. I would say, when I work with coaches, I say, are you crystal clear on who you want to be coaching? And I go so far as to say, what, what issues do you want to talk to people about? If you could have whatever you want, what do you want them showing up as their presenting issues? So that'd be one. Two, getting that their learnings are as important as the clients. Three, develop content context distinction. Now, another very practical one is, I think more and more, the more years I'm doing this, Mm -hmm. and the more I watch, that if we as coaches, if I as a coach, can grow and grow and grow in my ability to listen from presence, from my head, my heart, and my gut, the three centers of intelligence. And this is To me, there's so much into becoming a transformational leader, a transformational listener, Mm. that if we're growing in that, here's a wild thing I say to our coaches. If you can listen from total presence, it's quite possible that you'll have to say nothing. (laughs) I've said that over the years, you know. You think about it, you know, if you go, if you watch, you know, Ramana Maharshi or, you know, the great transformational leaders, probably Jesus, you know, the Buddha, they said great words, but I think their ability to simply be totally present and to listen to another from the head so I totally get your content, from the heart so I get your affect, your deepest feelings, and from the gut so I get your deepest longing, your deepest want, and from presence, I listen to you from non-judgmental attachment so that I just see you and get you, it seems to me that shifts occur. Mm. I say to people all the time, to our coaches, if we could just put a person in the middle of a circle of three or four of us who listen to them with that level of depth, the very experience of being gotten is transformational. Mm. You don't have to do anything if you get people from whatever you want to call it, unconditional love, non-judgmental attachment, total presence. 
So I say that that'd be the headline. And then I'd say, what are you doing as a coach to deepen your transformational listening skills? Mm. I think there are some very practical things to do. And I'd want to know that coaches are doing those practical things. Mm. Mm. Well, that just really lights me up. Um, you know, you've touched into, I think the topic that, that is, that lo most lights me up now around coaching is how can we become these kinds of transformational presences and, yes. um, like how can we, again, uh, take that risk where we almost, we, we, sur we put in, not completely, but in part surrender the tools and the training that we have and the person that we are in order yes. to show up deep presence with this other person and, and, and enter that space where the, where the magic can happen, where we don't really know what's going to happen. And, and yes. in, in some way we have to have to surrender the, the, I'm a good coach and I'm a coach who's going to take you there or do this and that. And, uh, you know, of course that's true for me on one level and I have to surrender that in order to truly be with that person. And, yeah. So, so, like, uh, I just feel a lot of, of um, gra gratitude and joy as I as I hear you talk about this because I I actually think this is something that's needed throughout the world. It's not just coaching, you know, this right? Is, this is like full stop, you know. It's, right. You know, I live in the United States. Imagine if our politicians could listen deeply to each other from presence. Mm. Imagine if we could go listen to ISIS from deep presence. Mm. So much of what goes on in the world would drop away. Mm. So it's not that you don't have a whole set of skills as a coach that you've developed mastery over. Mm -hmm. It's not that you don't have a set of credentials. And it's not that you aren't all that. It's just that in this thing we're talking about, we just let all that kind of gently recede. It's not that it goes away. Mm -hmm. It's here, but it moves to the background. And what comes into the foreground is presence. And then, of course, what you discover is that in that coaching experience, in that 30 minutes or that hour, a whole new thing came forward that surprises you as much as anybody. In other words, something comes forward that isn't part of your bag of tricks or comes forward that isn't part of your identity or your history or your biography because you were totally surrendered to presence. And... How fun is that? It's like, I say to, I speak a lot and I say to clients as well, I really get bored listening to myself say the same stuff that I've said a jillion times. I like to be in an experience where something totally new, and it could be an alchemy of several things that have gone on in the past, but mm. I'm sitting there going, wow, what's showing up here is a totally new experience of Oneness of the divine, of presence, of love, of hereness, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And to me, like you obviously practice this, the fact you get lit up around this, mm -hmm. you're doing the practices to allow you to be that space of transformational presence. Mm -hmm. there, I mean, the reason, one of the reasons we meditate is so that we can notice our mind's activity. Because when I'm in a coaching experience, my mind's going to do whatever it does, unless the mind gets quiet, which is fairly rare for most people. That's okay. The mind's just chattering away. Can I be with a chattering mind and be fully here with you? That's why I meditate, so I can practice that. Mm -hmm. What am I doing to practice opening my heart? What am I doing to have deeper and deeper experiences of grief or joy or bliss or sexual creative energy so that I develop this unbelievable range of emotional presence that can hold a space for a client feeling anything and there's no constriction inside of me. Mm. And those are the practices to me that we do as developing coaches. You know, when you first learn to coach, you, you actually go someplace and they teach you the basic coaching skills. That's fantastic. It's great. Mm. But as you keep going, like you've done over years, those recede and presence comes forward. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow! Yeah, yeah, awesome. <laughs> yeah, really awesome. cool, really cool. And and I agree. You know, like uh, I think something that's become uh, more and more alive for me is is like how can I expand my range of what I'm able to conduct and allow to flow through me? And you talked about this kind of divine wisdom, or maybe you didn't say quite those words, but it's yes. 
yeah, how can I become a conduit and, and open so that the relationship can have that, that, you know, we can have that in the coaching relationship and it's almost, you know, I don't want to make it too um, spiritual maybe, that's maybe my edge, but it, it's like there's a transmission possible. And I, I think, yeah. I, so, <laughs> yeah. I don't care what you call it. You could call it spiritual. You could call it the quantum field. My deal is it just got to get beyond my individual identity mm. and my individual personas, including all of my skills and knowledge and all that. There's something beyond that. Whatever you want to call it, I don't care. It's like the Tao. The Tao that can be named is not the Tao. Whatever, as soon as you name it, it's not that. So yeah. I don't care. But we all know what it's like. I can feel it in you. Just being right here, right now, I can feel in you that space which is beyond personality. Mm. And you can feel it in me. And people watching this, they can feel it. It's just so there. Mm. And my experience is the more we go visit that place the more that all the stuff of the identity and the personality, including all the drama of life, kind of relaxes itself easily. Yeah. yeah. Well, how cool is that? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then a natural kind of creation and skillful action emerges. You know, that's why I, I tie it back to, to coaching and to leadership. You know, the agitation dies down and, and this action emerges. So. And the clarity. Is, yeah. Well, I said I wanted to try and kind of keep this into a 30-minute interview. So I think, I mean, I've just, I feel totally lit up and um, we've covered a lot of... Uh, Perfect. Awesome. My phone's ringing, so it must be the time to stop. Well, be <laughs> before, before you do, I don't know if you have to grab that straight away. I was hoping to ask I, you what you will cover in the, uh, in the upcoming uh, summit. Like, uh, you know, you're going to be teaching, you're going to be doing a, a, a deep dive into a topic. What is that? Right. So let's walk and talk because this is an answer machine's about ready to fire off. Right. I mean, what I would love to do in the summit is I would love to take coaches through some of these basic models that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to take coaches through context versus content, how to be aware of where you're at, what it looks like to bring a client's attention to context how to hold a space from presence. All that is the kind of stuff that most deeply interests me. Mm. So if people are interested in going into that place, that would be very exciting to me. Oh, I'm, well, I'm sure they are. So uh, <laughs> we're going to do that. We're going to do that. Ah, uh, great. Well, yeah, I just want to uh, express my, my real gratitude. Uh, I can, you know, I've just, I love the energy you bring into this call. And, um, you know, I feel really lit up and, and um, I'm, I'm leaving the call with a lot more energy than I came in with. I've had a busy couple of weeks. And so, yeah, I'm really, really, uh, it's the first time we've ever spoken, but I hope it's not the last. And I'm just so excited you're in the summit. So thank you. Uh, me too. I love being in your presence. There's a sweet expansiveness to your presence that just allows for breath and relaxation. So thank you. Mm. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Hi, it's Joel here again, and I hope you've enjoyed this conversation. If you're excited about what we've been talking about and you want to learn directly from Jim and many other master coaches, then you can do in our upcoming online Coaches Rising Summit. Other faculty members include Michael Neal, Otto Sharma, Katie Hendricks, James Flaherty, Michaela Bohm, Rich Litvin, Steve Chandler, Marita Frijan, and many more. And each of them are going to teach you the tools and approaches they use to coach others into deep change. The sessions are live and interactive, and it begins on October the 19th. So head to www.coachesrisingsummit.com to find out more. And you can access the other free pre-summit audios with the faculty there too.